So last time we um, successfully mapped a native type to Lua using runtime type information using the RTTR library um, and we managed to make one here in Lua which is what we did. Uh, we called sprite.new and that made one of these. It made this native object, uh, it created one for us and constructed it. Um, so that was as far as we got but the good part about the way we did it there was that if we now map more types using this registration like we did down here, they'll all just get automatically mapped to Lua. We don't have to do any messing about. Um, we didn't get round to destroying it properly though, so we'll do that this time. Make sure we get our destructor called. Um, we can test that that's working. Um, yeah, because we're just creating a new one there, a local, and then it'll just be destroyed when the script closed. So that's all we did down here. Where is it? Yeah, we registered the class there. We registered our new, um, which is this method up here. It just creates a variant, um, but it doesn't get destroyed. So we can test that here. We all we've got to do is put a breakpoint in each one of those. We should get, we should get that being. Uh, there it is. We should get that being called. So the constructor gets called, and if I continue, uh, one second. Uh, that's the same line. I think it's just stepped over one line that's on the same line. Uh, and then we never get the destructor being called. So um, that is just not happening. So we need to fix that. And we're going to do it the same way we did it in the previous video. We're going to, we, we need to, well, we haven't done it yet, but we're gonna, we need to make a um, meta table for each one of the types that we register. And we need to register the meta method, the underscore underscore GC, the garbage collect meta method. And we'll attach that to a function which can destroy, well, which will call the destructor on the variant, which will then call the destructor on our class. And then we're all good to go. We're, we're properly creating and destroying our objects. So um, first step would probably be to create the meta table because we haven't got one for this type yet. So this is just, it. we're looping around all the types here. Um, and we need to create the new meta table, which is how we do that. New meta table. Uh, and we need to give that a name. I just won't fill in that for now, but we, we need to name that meta table. Um, then we want to, now we've got that on the stack, let's push that onto the Lewis stack. Uh, we'll push the garbage collect, the name of the garbage collect meta method on, because that's the that's the one we want to register right now. Um, push, and then we need to push a function on to function that will be called. So we had create user datum. Uh, we'll have destroy user datum. So this can this will be able to destroy any which is great. So it's better than before when we just destroyed the sprite, we're gonna be able to destroy anything with this. And we want Lua set table. So we're just gonna set the minus one, minus two, minus three. So we set that, we set that destroy, uh, that C function as the underscore underscore GC meta method in this new meta table, which I've just called XXX for now. So we, we do need to come up with a name for that meta table. So we'll get that from the, uh, well, we get it from this class, the registered name. Um, so we'll make, I, 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 like, I usually like just append something onto the end, like meta table or MT or something like that. So that's what we'll do here. Uh, we'll go string meta table name. So we'll get the name that so in there will be the name of the class that we're binding. So in the sprite class that the, the word sprite will be there because that's the name we we stuck on uh, here. So yeah, so it'll be that name uh, in that case. But but of course, this can just bind anything. Uh, so I'll just append. I mean, I, I don't does it really matter if you do this? I, I think it's better if the you kind of know when you see these in a debug or anything, you know that this is the meta table. So I'll just put like MT on the end for that. Um, it might not make a difference. I've not really tried it, but um, there it is. So, so there you go. So that basically just, it creates a name for our meta table, creates the meta table and then puts the garbage collect um, function on there. So we only have to do that once for every single type. Uh, Create the meta table 
and meta methods. So yeah, we only got to do that once um, because every single like object that gets created by Lua can share the same meta table. Um, so there's only one meta table, but many objects share it. Um, so what we haven't done is we haven't created this destroy function. So we'll do that now. Just so Lua stops complaining, or sorry, the compiler stops complaining. So that again, it's the same signature as all the, the Lua functions. Uh, this one will return nothing because this is just going to call a destructor for us. Um, so that's all good. That should be calling that function when, uh, when that um, when the garbage when the Lua finalizer happens, the garbage collect will happen. Um, but what we need to do is uh, whenever one of these um, types is created, we need to tell it what meta table to use. So that would be done in the create here. So we create a user data here, but now we need to pick up our meta table again and assign it to the user data that got created or the user datum. Um, so what we really want to do is probably extract this out into its own function, just because we're going to call this in more than one place. So um, I'll just put this in its own function and then, then there's only one way of getting a meta table name. So it returns a standard string and it's meta table name. And it takes the RTTR type. So we just refactored that out into its own function and it will return, whoops, turn the meta table name for type t that's all it does nothing fancy it doesn't return the meta table just the name of the meta table so i'll get rid of that and this becomes what we need the class to register is the type so we just swap that out that we've just done a bit of refactoring there that we now have a function to create our meta table name uh, we can use that again uh, when the object is created here. Uh, we we retrieve that meta table that we created. Uh, is it Lua? Is it just Lua get meta table? I think it might be. Um, have I got that right? Yeah, oh, it's Lua. Yeah, because that gets a meta table off the stack. I think it's that one. Yeah, Lua L get meta table. That's going to get one by by our name that we've created, uh, which is uh, the type to create because we passed that in as a as an up value. So that whoop, that retrieves the meta table that we created. So you know every single one of these sprites that we create is going to share the same meta table, um, and then all we need to do is set set the meta table onto that user data, which is at one. So they're just the only thing on the stack when we started. And then that's us setting the user value as well. So we successfully created the meta table. We assigned the meta table to each one of the sprites. Well, I say the sprites, each one of the types that we create. Uh, the only thing we've not done now is called the destroy function. This should still be a working program at this point. Uh, oh, except I haven't returned the actual name of the meta table. That's a problem. So this, this should work just like before, except it's going to call the, the destroy function and it won't get destroyed because we haven't written that function yet. So we could just put a breakpoint in there to make sure that it is actually working. And it looks like it is. So uh, all we have to do now is uh, call our destroy. So uh, each one of these uh, user datum is uh, an RTTR variant. And that should be on the top of the stack when the when the underscore underscore GC gets called. So um, let's just retrieve that. So to um, it's, it's on the top of the stack, and we need to cast it to our the thing that we know it is because we're basically going on the assumption that every single user datum in our like 
in our lure binding is going to be one of these. So we're going to make that assumption that at this point anyway, that every single one is going to be one of these. So we don't have to check that. Not unless that assumption changes, we don't have to do a check to say, is this some weird type or what's going on here? So we've retrieved it. Um, and we just, uh, we call the destructor on the variant, which will then in turn, uh, inside it knows the type and it's got all the uh, information to do, to call the actual destructor of the type um, that we've bound to it. So that's probably all we need to do in there, I think. There's not much else to it. Um, and we can check that by just putting breakpoints in there. Uh, we already know that's being called. So let's just check to see if we were successful We should because we now should have a, a constructor call and a destructor call. So there's our constructor. And there's the destructor. So awesome. Uh, nothing's crashed. At least I don't think so. Program works exactly like before, except now we're cleaning up memory. And as you can see in our trivial case here, it didn't make any difference because the destructor did nothing. But um, it will make a difference depending on your type. Uh, so because this is a generic binding, it has to work correctly. So there you go. We are successfully uh, calling constructor, well, we're successfully constructing a native type inside Lua and we're successfully destroying it. So next time we'll get on to binding the rest of the stuff like we did last time in the um, when we did it in the non-generic way without the runtime type information. And we'll keep moving forward like that till we got back to where we were. And then we can just go ahead and bind more types without, with, without doing too much more code. So uh, it's all progress. That was pretty easy. Next time we'll move on to the next stuff.